Robin Hood is a global phenomenon. Disney cartoons, Marvel comics, Bollywood movies, toys, video games, Christmas pantos, there is even a Robin Hood opera. But the thing I love about Robin Hood is that it's a legend. Nobody owns it, so everybody gets to make their own version. Robin can be a boy or a girl. Robin can be 600 years in the past or a thousand years in the future. My Robin Hood is a 12 year old kid living in the modern world. By the end of hacking, heists and flaming arrows, you'll see Robin go on the run from corrupt cops, rob a cash machine, start a city-wide riot and flip a police car. But to start with, he's a pretty ordinary kid who does have a few hacking skills and he's going to try and use them to unlock his head of year's computer and change the grades on his end of term report. Chapter number one, Mr. Barclay is a nutter. The legend of Robin Hood begins in Loxley High School on a Wednesday afternoon. It was the middle of lunch break and pepperoni pizza and buttered corn sat heavy in 12 year old Robin's nervous stomach. If we get caught we're dead, Robin's pal Alan Adol noted as he shoulder barged through double doors. The school was a dump and the boys set off down a corridor lined with vandalised lockers. Mildew on the windows gave the light a greenish tinge and a stink wafted from drains in the girls' bathroom at the far end. The two lads were a contrast. Robin was small but muscly, with scruffy hair and ketchup down his purple school polo shirt. Alan was a neat freak. His gangly frame started with madly expensive basketball boots, whiter than anything in a toothpaste ad, and topped out with an extravagant afro that forced him to duck under doors. Mr Barclay is a nutter. Alan continued. Craig got two weeks of detention for that burp in assembly. Robin smirked at the memory. Craig's vast rolling belch, silencing a guest lecturing the school on water safety and leaving half of the hall in hysterical laughter as Mr Barclay grabbed Craig by his collar and dragged him out. Barclay's on lunch duty on the other side of the school, Robin soothed. And you're just my lookout. All of the benefits, none of the risk. Robin was trying to sound calm, but still shuddered when he stopped at a door. It had muddy kick marks and peeling brown paint. The sign read, Mr Barclay, Head of Year 7, under which someone had graffitied, Abandon hope ye who enter here. Can you get me an A? Alan begged, as Robin pulled a neon plastic key out of his pocket. Mate, you can barely add two numbers together. Are you saying I'm thick? Alan accused. Maths sure isn't one of your strengths, Robin said diplomatically. Nobody's going to believe it if you get an A. How do you get Mr Barclay's key anyway? Alan asked. He leaves his keys on the desk in his classroom, Robin explained. I took a close-up photo, then made copies using the 3D printer at my dad's work. My dad's got a 3D printer. He only used it once, so basically he spent £500 to make a small plastic hedgehog. Your family's got way too much money, Robin said irritably. Can we please concentrate? Keys are normally metal, so Robin worried as he slotted the yellow plastic inside the lock. Some girls ran out of the bathroom. There was a big shriek and one shouted, Give me my hat, moose brain! But they paid the boys no attention. Once they were out of sight, Robin twisted the key in the lock and felt it flex. I'm bigger, shall I try? Alan asked. I don't want it to snap, Robin explained. I'm being gentle. There was an alarming scraping sound, but just as Robin thought his efforts were doomed, the bolt made a satisfying thunk. Am I a genius or what? Robin said. We're in.